Hello everybody and welcome to this very special Empathy Day edition of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Bidoff. Now then, I am a children's author and illustrator. Maybe you've seen my latest book. It's called The Blue-Footed Booby. It's all about a booby here with blue feet. And it's kind of a detective story really because there's lots of cakes that have mysteriously gone missing in this story and the only evidence as to who might have taken them is some blue footprints. <gasps> I wonder who it could be. Maybe you've seen my chapter books, the Peanut Jones series. I'm super proud of this. This is the first one, it's called The Illustrated City and this is called The Twelve Portals. I'm very, very, very proud of these books. They are very heavily illustrated. Look, loads and loads of illustrations in these. They're nice short chapters and the story if I do say so myself, is very, very exciting. I'm just finishing the third book now. In fact, I'm meant to be finished. I think I'm meant to have finished it. <gasps> I'm slightly late on my deadline. If you're watching Macmillan, I'm nearly done. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. <laughs> but we are here today on this very special Empathy Day edition of Draw With Rob to draw a picture together. Um, Shall we talk about empathy for a second, first of all? Um, so what is empathy, I hear you ask? Well, I think that empathy is its kind of the ability to experience and understand something from another person's point of view. So to understand another person's feelings, really, to put yourself in their place. That's what empathy is to me, anyway. And I think having empathy is one of the most important skills that we humans can have, can learn, can develop. And it's never too late to start developing your empathy. Because empathy is like a muscle. It grows. The more we use our empathy, the more it grows. Now, Empathy Day. Look at this lovely, lovely logo here. Uh, <laughs> the Empathy Day logo, isn't it nice? I think it was designed by Sophie Hen, um, who is a very, very talented children's author and illustrator. Now, Empathy Day is the perfect opportunity for us to try and understand each other a little bit better, I think. It's the perfect opportunity for us to learn more about empathy and why empathy is so important. And it's the perfect day, an opportunity for us to put it into action. But actually, do you know what? I want you guys to remember, it is empathy day, but every day is empathy day. We've got to use our empathy every single day. If you want to find a bit more out about Empathy Day, you can visit this website here. And you can find out all about the official Empathy Day stuff. And it includes details about mission empathy, which is a really, really fun thing. It's like five creative and uh, really fun empathy boosting activities for you to do. So if you visit this website, you can learn much, much more about empathy. But I've been talking for a long time now, and I know you're already an itching to start drawing. So should we start drawing our picture? Now, I had to think hard about what to draw today. I like drawing animals. That goes without saying. I've drawn lots and lots and lots of cute animals. Lots of you have probably drawn them with me. And I was thinking about what animal is, to me, appears to be an empathetic animal. And then I thought, well, I think eyes are very important when it comes to empathy, okay? Eyes, people say, don't they, that eyes are the windows of the soul. And I think if you want to get inside another person's head and work out how they're feeling, which is what empathy is all about, then I think you have to really look into their eyes, don't you? And when you look into somebody's eyes, I think you really understand what they're thinking. So I was thinking about animals with distinctive eyes. And then, do you know what? It hit me. Bush babies. Have you ever seen a bush baby? Oh my gosh, they are so cute. They've got enormous eyes. <laughs> I mean, Google Google them and have a look. They are unbelievably cute animals. And I just thought, I can't believe I have not drawn a bush baby yet. So I thought today was the perfect time to draw a bush baby. So this is how Draw With Rob works, just in case you haven't watched one of these videos before. Lots of people say to me they don't think they're very good at drawing. Nonsense, says I. Everybody can draw. I mean, drawing's not like maths, right? There's no right or wrong answer. It's all subjective, isn't it? What one person thinks is a good drawing, another person might not like at all. So people who say they can't draw, I just say, well, that's nonsense. Everybody can draw. 
I'll admit that some people need a little bit of help with the order that we do the drawing in and that's where I come in because what I'm going to do now with our bush baby drawing is I'm going to break it down into little bite sized pieces right so on my piece of paper here I'm going to draw a little shape or a line that kind of thing then I'm going to stop then you guys are going to draw what I draw okay then start up the video again I will draw a little bit more then you will draw then I will draw, then you will draw, then I will draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, you draw, you draw. and we'll end up, at the end of all of that, we'll have put all those jigsaw puzzle pieces together, and we'll have a lovely drawing of a very cute bush baby, I promise you. All you're going to need is a piece of paper, you're going to need a pen or a pencil, something to draw with, something to colour with a bit later on, it would be fun to colour this in, I think, um, and that's it, shall we start? Shall we make a start? Right, there are quite a few circles involved with this bush baby drawing, certainly at the beginning anyway. And let's see, let's see, where should we start? We're gonna start right in the middle, right in the middle of our piece of paper. I want you to draw a little circle, like that. What's that, a centimeter or so in diameter, something like that. Nice easy start, right? Next, I want you to draw a bigger circle, and in fact, quite a big circle. Let's do it about this big. Whoa, that is a big circle in comparison to the first one that we drew. And can you see I've done it so that the bottom of the two circles line up? Yeah? Let's do another one, this side of the little circle, exactly the same as this one. Well, as close as you can get to the same. Now, it's quite hard to do circles. Lots of people say, they say that uh, who is it? I think it was Michelangelo. They say Michelangelo, who's a very, very famous artist, if you haven't heard of him, Michelangelo could draw a perfect circle with free hand. And I remember when I was at school, that was always the benchmark of a good artist, if you could draw a perfect circle. And I worked really, really hard on drawing perfect circles. But as you can see, <laughs> apparently I've totally forgotten because these are not perfect circles. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, that's fine. I like it when drawings aren't perfect. You can see here where my, I'm using a brush pen here. The line is kind of broken up a little bit there. The circles aren't exactly the same size. It goes thick and thin. That's what I think adds personality to a drawing. Those little kind of quirks. Some people might call them mistakes or mishaps. Mistakes are brilliant in art, I think. When you can see a brush mark or something goes slightly wrong, it really, really adds character to the drawing. Otherwise, I find it a bit kind of clinical and a bit cold. So if ever you make a mistake drawing, don't screw up your piece of paper and start again. Don't even rub it out, just keep on drawing. Draw through your mistakes and I promise you, often it's those little mistakes that you will look back on fondly in the drawing. You'll say, oh yeah, I remember when I did that, but look, it's turned out really well. Trust me, that's how it works. Right, well, <laughs> where was I? Right, I keep digressing a bit, don't I? The next thing I want you to do is, let me see, right, let's do, let's do this bit first. So in that tiny circle, at the top of the tiny circle, I want you just to draw a little U shape, like that, right at the top. Coming down from that U, I want you to draw a vertical line, which basically, it sort of goes to the center of that tiny circle, like that. At the bottom of that line, I want you to draw a little curved line. And look, that is gonna be our bush baby's nose and mouth. Tiny, isn't it? It's tiny. Do you know what? Do you know how I do nostrils? I always tell you this. I do, I do nostrils as a tiny little sort of curly whirly bit like that. So I'm gonna add two tiny curly whirly bits there for my bush baby's nostrils. Okay, so if this little tiny circle is the area where the nose and mouth is, what do you think these two things are? That's right. They are the famous bush baby eyes, the eyes that I was talking about, the huge bush baby eyes. So they are the most important feature of this drawing, especially because we're talking about empathy today. Um, so what I want you to do, we're gonna do the pupils now, but usually when I do the pupils, we, draw, we just draw another circle, right? In the center of that big circle. But today we're gonna do something very different. What I want you to do, I want you to sort of imagine the face of a clock, okay? So imagine we are gonna draw a little circle in there. I want you to go to three o'clock on that circle and we're gonna go around from three o'clock to 12 o'clock. So we're gonna go all the way around, but when we get to 12 o'clock, we're gonna stop, okay? 
Then we're going to draw a sort of semicircle that's kind of cut out of our big circle, like that. So it's like a sort of like a moon, sort of a crescent moon shape, like that. We're going to do exactly the same over here. So start at three o'clock. We're going to come around. We're going to stop when we get to twelve o'clock. Then we're going to do our little semicircle, cut out of it. Then I want you to colour those two in, like that. Now this isn't, it's not going to be clear why we've done this until we colour in our drawing. So we're just going to leave it like that for the time being. It's going to look a little bit strange just for the time being, but trust me, when we colour this in right at the end, it will all make sense. It sort of makes sense now. They look a bit kind of mangary though now, don't they, these eyes? But honestly, it will make sense a bit later on. Okay, <clears throat> the next thing that I want you to do is from about here, so three o'clock position on that big circle there, I want you to come down, follow the line of the circle around, and then we're just gonna go straight across underneath the nose and the mouth and up the other side, following that circle around, stopping about there, okay? This is already looking cute, isn't it? Come on, you must admit, <laughs> it's already looking very cute. Okay, now, bush babies, as well as big eyes, they also have very big ears. Ears are equally important in empathy, right? We need to listen. It's all about listening, empathy, listening to another person's point of view. If you don't listen to what they say, then how can you put yourself in their shoes, right? How can you be empathetic? So listening is very important, which is another reason why a bush baby is a perfect animal to draw today on Empathy Day. So what I want you to do, we're gonna do these big bush baby ears. From this point here, we'll do the left one first as we look. We're gonna come up, carry on up. We're gonna start curling away from the eyes and we're gonna curl away in a really big curve like that, all the way around, tuck back under, and then we're gonna disappear back into the side of our bush baby's head. I told you they got big ears. Let's do the same on the other side. As is often the case, once you do it on both sides, things start to become a little bit clearer. The drawing starts to make a bit more sense. Now I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to do the same shape here, but in mirror image. It's always harder to do when you're doing the second one because you have something that you've got to aim towards. The first time, you can do anything really. Second time, you've got to try and match it. That's not too bad. The good thing about these brush pens is when you have a line that isn't perfect like that, you can just sort of go back over it, keep adding to it to smooth it out. And then if that one's a bit thicker, I can always just thicken up this side. Okay, that's not bad. That's not bad. So that is roughly the ear shape. To finish off the ears, we're gonna, we'll start from this side this time. We'll go from the top, we'll just come out a little bit curve down, back towards the top of the head. And we're gonna go across, but we can, I'm not going dead straight, I'm going slightly up in the middle. Slightly curving up in the middle to make a kind of head shape then. We're gonna curve back up. Again, I'm mirroring this side. Back up and into the ear, like that. <laughs> it's a bit like Baby Yoda, doesn't it? <laughs> That's not a bad thing, Baby Yoda's very cute. I think Baby Yoda's probably very empathetic too. In the middle here, let's do a little tuft of hair. I love these little tufts of hair. We just do a few little lines and loops like that. I do this on quite a few of my drawings and my characters. It's a little trademark of mine, a little tuft of hair. There we go. If you look at my book, Grr, there's an owl in that book whose name is Eugene. Has a little tuft of hair, just like that. Okay. Now, we're gonna do our bush baby sitting down. I think we're gonna do, they're very good climbers, bush baby. I should tell you a bit about bush babies, shouldn't I? Well, first of all, they're primates, okay? So sort of like a type of monkey. Um, they're very cute. They live in uh, the forested and kind of the bush regions of Africa, bush baby, you see? That's why, the clue is in the name. And um, they're very cute, they're very, very good climbers and they're very, very good jumpers. They can jump really, really high. So I'm gonna do our bush baby sitting in the branches of a tree, right? I just thought that's 
Um, that's a good idea. Do you want to know why they've got large eyes? It's because they because they it helps them when they're. I think they're. I'm not sure if they're entirely nocturnal, but they certainly they are about at night, and so that's why their eyes are so large to let as much light in as possible, so that they can see in the dark. Basically, there you go. Bush baby facts galore for you guys. But as I said, I'm going to do our bush baby sitting in the branch of a tree. So. We're going to do the bush baby sitting down. Now they've got feet. Their feet have got like thumb, thumbs on the feet, right? <clears throat> I've got a bit, sorry, a bit of a dry throat. I'm really sorry. But they've got thumbs on their feet. So I'm going to do the feet facing towards us. And it's going to look a bit like they're sort of the palms of two hands are facing towards us. So this is how we do that. We start by drawing a little curve like that. And you've got to imagine the center of our pictures there, straight through the nose. Just to the right of that, we're going to draw the little curve, like that, okay? From the left-hand end of that curve, we're going to head straight upwards, about that far. And then we're going to curve around and head down. So we've done a sort of little whoop, end shape. From the bottom of that, we're going to go diagonally up towards that eye. Then, do you know what? I'm going to change my pen to my thinner one because we need to do a little bit of thinness here. Then we're going to turn around and head back down. Then we're going to go up and down again. Then we're going to go up and down again. And then we're going to go up and down one last time. And this time we're going to join up with that line. So we've done a kind of hand shape. But actually, this hand is a foot. <laughs> Just to confuse you. Then we're going to do exactly the same, but a mirror image over at this side. So do you remember how we started? We started with that curve, didn't we? Down the bottom. And I, sometimes I think it's quite difficult. If somebody just said to you, just draw a hand shape, you might not know where to start. And often that's the most difficult bit, just starting. So I find just drawing this little U shape, this sort of little curve, that's just a starting point. And once you've done that, the rest kind of comes quite easy. So remember we go up, turn around, head back down. We're going to go up diagonally like we did before. Turn around a little sausage shape. Finger number one. Number two. Number three. And then last but not least, number four. Smooth it all out as best I can. There we go. So they are going to be our bush baby's little feet. Now, we're going to do a line between like that. This is just the lower part of our bush baby's body. Now the other arms we're going to do coming down on either side here, very cutely. So from about here, so from below that eye, I want you to draw a diagonal line, slightly curving, like that. Then we're going to do another one parallel, not far away. Just got little thin arms, we're going to come up and then turn around and head back down to the foot. And that's going to be one of our bush baby's arms. <clears throat> then we'll just finish that off with a little zigzag. And then we're going to add another little hand. So this time we're going to come down. It's going to be a bit smaller. We come down in our little sausage shape like that. Then we're going to go this way this time. So we're going to go down, back up, down, back up, down, back up. Last but not least, down, back up, and into there. So a little hand shape. Let's do exactly the same on the other side. We go up, down, or done the other line this time, that's all right. Like that, first of all, we do the thin arm shape with a zigzag at the end, like so. Down and up. And you're gonna do the four fingers, one, two, three, four, and back in. And there we go. Our little sitting down bush baby. Super cute, right? Super cute. Now, do you remember I said I was gonna do our bush baby sitting on the branch of a tree? That's because that's exactly what I'm gonna do. <laughs> that's why I said it. So, <laughs> what am I talking about? Right, so that is our bush baby's bottom, right? Let's carry that line along like this and we're going to head out of the page. We're going to add a little kind of branch there. And then we're just going to continue off, off out of the page. Let's continue over this side. The little branch. We don't have to do it dead straight. 
we're going to go out to the page there. Then we'll go back over to the right hand side about a centimetre or a centimetre and a half below that other line. We'll just start moving here. We're going to go underneath everything. I think we'll get a bit thicker towards that end just to imply that the trunk of our tree is somewhere over here. And there we go. Our bush baby is sitting in the branch of a tree. This little bit, I'm going to add a little stalk coming up out of it. A leaf on the end. Another leaf coming up this side. And then maybe one over here. And I think just by adding that little detail, three little leaves, that just says tree immediately, right? You don't need to add anything else, really. I think that's it. We're nearly finished with our line work for this drawing now. The last thing we need to add is our bush baby's tail. Now they have these quite long curly tails. <clears throat> and anything that's curly, I love to draw it. If you look at my signature, look, here we go. Blue footy booby, my signature. I add little swirly bits all over the shop. On booby too, I add lots of curly bits. I really, really like doing that. Hang on, I'm just gonna have a drink of water. Hold tight, reader. That's better. Hopefully, I won't be choking and coughing all the way through the rest of this video now. So the tail, this is how we do it. We start here, coming out of the side of that foot. We go along, through, and then we just do one of my favorite little swirly bits, like that. Now that, you might think, is a very thin tail. That is just the inside bit of the tail, guys, because if I carry this on up and over, and I add a few little zigzaggy bits like that as I go around, even into here, zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. There we go, we've got a thicker, bushier, bush baby tail, like that. And it really is that simple. There we go, I'm just gonna sharpen up those little pointy bits. Get it how I want it. And that is our very cute bush baby outline. Do you know what, I'm gonna add a couple of eyebrows. Sometimes in cartoons, eyebrows, they're off the top of the head, like that. And eyebrows, as we all know, are very, very important in conveying emotion. But I want this bush baby to look very happy. So the eyebrows are a long way above the eyes, so far above the eyes that they're off the top of the head. It's quite a common thing in cartoons. It is a bit weird if you think about it too much, but I just think it works in this instance. Right, I think it's time to color in the bush baby now. As you know with Draw With Rob videos, the rules are there ain't no rules. You can make your bush baby any colors you like. I'm probably gonna stick to the traditional sort of browny, gray, sort of beigey colors. Orange eyes, I think I'm gonna do orangey yellow eyes, I always like that. There's gonna be a bit of pink here and there, pink feet maybe and hands and the inside bits of the ears. Um, but as I said, you do whatever you like. You do you, okay? The more colorful the better, that's what I say. I'm gonna go into super speed mode to color mine in. When I get back, I'll tell you a few little tips and tricks that I've used to make my bush baby look even more bush baby like. And I will explain why we left that little bit in the eyes as well. It will all become clear once I've colored. I will see you back here in 20 or 30 seconds. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. go there is my finished colored in bush baby pretty cute huh pretty cute I can hear Ringo barking in the garden I think Ringo was basically saying he thinks it's really cute too so thanks Ringo thanks um right first things first do you remember the little bit we had cut out of the pupil now hopefully you can see why I did that I wanted the reflections in the eye to kind of be prominent I wanted them to be in front of the pupil I put one big one there and a little one down there which is quite a common uh, tactic when you're doing kind of manga style drawings. Um, so I was always going to colour in the eyes this kind of lovely yellow to kind of orange kind of ombre effect, this kind of blend. And so what I did, the first thing I did, I don't know if you saw, I drew the circles and then coloured around them. And hopefully you can see it really makes the eyes look lovely and shiny. And um, 
especially when this drawing, the reason I chose to do a bush baby for Empathy Day is because I think, you know, as I said earlier, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And I think when the eyes, I think when the eyes are shiny, it means they're kind of wet, which means they're usually they're quite emotional. And I think empathy is all about understanding somebody else's emotions. So I really want the eyes to be lovely and shiny. What else have I done? Well, you can see with the fur, I've added lots of little lines to make the fur look a little bit fur-like, and I've sort of added white patch, uh, sort of lighter patches around here and on the tummy as well, just to keep a bit of variation. And that's actually where, that's the way the patterning works on actual bush babies. Lovely big ears, which I've faded, I've made darker, kind of closer to the head, because I think the ear holes are sort of in there. So by adding that darkness, it just sort of brings the head forward a little bit. Um, similarly, I've made the, the feet, I've just, just made them slightly darker in between this area here because like if you look there, you get a little crease in it. It makes a little darker patch in this kind of area. So I've done that um, and added a bit of shadow uh, on the tree branch to make it look like our bush baby is sitting on the branch. And there we go. I'm very proud of this one. I think it's a very cute little character. Now, um, something else that we can do for Empathy Day, I think that's a good idea, is to make an empathy resolution. So what that means, it's a bit like a New Year's resolution, but you say, right, this year, I'm gonna be more empathetic by doing this. And you say what your new empathy resolution is. So for example, my, the problem I have, I'm very, very busy. I write lots of books, I illustrate lots of books, and I spend a lot of time out here in my studio working. Um, and that means that sometimes when I'm very very busy I can't help out my family in the house so I don't get to cook dinner as much as I might like or help with the tidying up or the washing that kind of thing and um, I think sometimes I just take it for granted because I'm working so hard I take for granted the fact that my wife and my children do all that other extra work because I can't do it because I'm out here doing my books and doing my Draw With Rob videos and that kind of thing. And I really think I'm gonna try, I do appreciate what they do. I'm very, very grateful for what they do, but I'm gonna tell them. I'm gonna tell them that I do appreciate it because putting myself in their shoes, them having to do more of those kind of jobs, um, it makes me feel, I'm very, very grateful for that. So that's my little empathy resolution. And I think, I want you guys to have a think about what your empathy resolutions might be. A really nice thing, I think we've done it before with one of our Empathy Day videos, um, you could draw a little voice bubble coming out from your bush baby saying what your Empathy Day resolution is. That would be lovely. So it fits maybe like, I'm going to be much kinder to my, to my little brother or sister. Your little bush baby could say, I'm going to be kinder to my brother or sister, that kind of thing. So why don't you add a voice bubble with your Empathy resolution in it? That would be lovely. I would really, really, really want to see that. Um, I want to see your drawings. I can't wait to see your drawings. And nor can the guys at Empathy Day UK as well. We all want to see your drawings. So this is how we get to see them. If you post them on social media, I want you to use these hashtags, okay? First of all, draw with Rob. That hashtag is always a good one. That's how I get to see it. Um, I also want you to use the hashtag of empathy, empathy Day too. So there we go, Draw With Rob and Empathy Day. And you can tag at Empathy Day UK on social media as well. That would be really great. You know my tags on social media, tag me too. If you're watching on Facebook, comment below. That way we get to see your drawings. And I'm really, really excited about seeing your drawings. I can't wait to see how the colorways you've gone for and maybe your Empathy Day resolutions too. Right, what else can I tell you? Oh yes. Don't forget to visit the Empathy Lab website, www.empathylab.uk, for all sorts of Empathy Day related stuff. Um, I want you to be kind to your friends, to your family. Kindness is so linked with empathy. Um, have a think about your Empathy Day resolutions. Keep those pencils sharpened. Keep on drawing, keep on reading. I hope you've had a good time doing this drawing. I've loved showing it to you. I'm going to be, be back very soon with another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, take care, everyone. Lots of love. Bye-bye.